Welcome to downtown Hingham, Massachusetts and historic Main Street for Harbor Media's coverage of the 2023 Hingham 4th of July Parade. I'm Maura Farden, a longtime Hingham resident, a longtime on-air host, and 20-year Hingham resident. Wow. And working alongside me today to call all the action is Robert Chinante, the president of the South Shore Conservatory. And we just spent the morning talking to lots of guests from Hingham who are leaders in our community and learned a lot. It was we great did. to have them here. And we were grateful for them stopping by. And we're getting ready for the parade, which is making its way down Main Street. And Robert, what are you looking forward to most? Well, first of all, I have to say I'm just impressed by the number of people that are out here despite the rain. Despite the A lot of troopers. Um, but I really think it speaks to the, the spirit of the day. You know, Hingham is really known for, for the celebration. It's truly a one-of-a-kind gathering in this town. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the floats and the marching bands and just a lot of red, white, and blue. Yes, and you know what? It doesn't look like the spirit and enthusiasm has been dampened by the soggy conditions. We're Not looking, at we're all. sitting right out front of the Hingham Historical so Society. AZ oh. Studio is our partner, and we're looking at Hingham Historic. And this year's theme is Together for the Fourth. So that's exactly, as you said, what this represents, our community coming together to celebrate Independence Day. And everyone has a, has a hand in the parade. You Absolutely. know, it touches every facet and community. Um, facet of the community. Takes a village and that village is Hingham. Absolutely. And this broadcast is brought to you by live by our community partners AZ Studio, South Shore Conservatory. We have a representative here, the president. Mm -hmm. Sport Tobin taking a toke and we are Harbor Media, Hingham's community media center. And remember you can find us live in HD on Comcast 1072 or Verizon 2131 or you can find us on demand by going to harbormedia.org. And as I mentioned, we're in historic downtown Hingham. And Hing Hingham is a town that is very rich in history and tradition. The 4th of July Parade is one of our town's most treasured events. It's the Absolutely. most well attended yes. event of the year. That's including Christmas in the Square or Arts Walk and all of that. And the 4th of July Parade Committee does an amazing job. They orchestrate, fundraise, execute the parade and this is all due to their handiwork so yeah. we're very grateful for them that we have this wonderful celebration it's really wonderful you know and as we were saying earlier in some of our interviews no taxpayer dollars go to this it is exactly. fully funded by the efforts of the parade committee and things like our 50 flags exactly. and just wonderful to see that coming to fruition absolutely and and you know so many people in town have already um, displayed their flags, myself included. I had a nice young man from the from Hingham High School who um, was on the track and field team, cr cross country, I believe, and he placed my flags, which is great. And I, we're starting to see some yes. of the performers come down Main Street. It's We're calling it as we see it, just as you will see it. So we hear the sirens, yep. and um, Uncle Sam is usually first coming up but I also the Hingham Police Hingham Police are making their way are making their way also and we were talking about just sort of the, the history of our town and it's important to note that Hingham was incorporated in 1635 so mm. 388 years which yeah. is incredible and the town places a lot of you know importance on preserving that history and traditions like this you know play into that obviously and here we see here we see our Hingham Police. The Hingham Police Department. Leading the charge at the front of the parade. <laughs> Waving to us. <laughs> All the first signs of the performers are making their way down Main Street. And Main Street is decked out in red, white, and blue. Not only the 50 flags, which is the number one fundraiser yes. for the parade, but also the red, white, and blue stripes along the parade route. Yes. And here is Here's Uncle Sam. Here's Uncle Sam, yes. He, he, it's, so Uncle Sam has been marching in this parade. He's a resident, George Ford. He's in his 16th year marching as Uncle Sam. Yeah, and to be <laughs> Uncle Sam, couple facts. Um, you must be a grandparent. Uh -huh. You must have gray hair <laughs> and be an active senior citizen within the town. All right, you're not eligible yet, uh, Robert. Not yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, George Ford just says it's the highlight of his year to march in this parade. And he's been doing it for so long and we're grateful for his service. Yeah. And the police car is making its way down. Chief David Jones is our chief of police, a native of Hingham. Yep. He joined the department in 2000. He became deputy chief in 2015, followed by a stint as interim chief 
before being appointed to the permanent role in February 2021. And of course we had Opry the dog. Yes. She was adorable. I think and we'll see her a little later in the parade. We got her Officer training Tom cards oh, right here. Of Opry. Oh, there's Opry. <laughs> Great timing. Officer and there's our Ford. friend. Great job. Officer Ford and Opry. Incredible. And I think we're and hearing the sounds of our first band. Yes, we are. This is the Commonwealth Pipes and Drums. We're going to see a lot of marching bands and hear a lot of great music today. It's one of the things I love the most about parades is, is the music. And you are our resident music expert, so we're going to weigh have you weigh in later. Do <laughs> or my maybe best. Do, or maybe do name that tune. We'll try. Let's take a listen. Robert, last year when you were a guest on the pre-show, you talked a lot about American composers and how some of the American composers have given us our patriotic soundtracks. Absolutely. And all the great patriotic songs we enjoy. I mean, patriotic music is really synonymous with the day, and you know, you hear our marching bands, and, and that's just one sign of it. But when I think of American music, I not only think about the patriotic music, but the composers over the years that have really shaped the American musical vernacular. Uh, one of the composers that I may have talked about last year is Aaron Copland, and you know, one of the things that Copland said is, so long as the human spirit thrives on this planet, music in some living form will accompany it. And I, I think 4th of July is a, a great reminder of that as we hear the, the soundtrack of our holiday. Exactly. Oh, I love that. I always say to my kids, music makes the heart happy. And <laughs> I, I believe does. that so wholeheartedly. And now we're almost about to see our elected officials who will be marching and making their way down Main Street. Of course, we had Bill Ramsey yes, here Yes, it was earlier, great to see him this morning. He was and one of our three select board members. And we spoke to a retired town government devotee in Eileen McCracken, and she yes. was wonderful. She was our former town clerk. And we will see our present town clerk, Carol Falvey, joining the elected officials. The rain is coming down a just little bit of a, a breeze. little bit. Yes, a little bit of a breeze. Very lucky that we're covered here. <laughs> we are fortunate in to our cover. harbor media feel, tent. Feel a little guilty about <laughs> that, but it, it honestly it looks like the crowd is as dense as it's been in years, and thousands yeah. of people attend the Fourth of July parade in Hingham. They line the streets from Middle Street where it begins. They set up the floats in at Hingham uh, High School, and they make their way down Middle Street. And, and then, of course, they land here right out front of us in historic downtown Hingham. Again, we're out front of AZ Studio, and we're very grateful for their support yes. so that we can bring you live HD coverage from Harbor Media. Yes, and you can watch that HD coverage on Comcast 1072, Verizon 2131, or harbormedia.org. And, you know, I love the fact that you can go back and watch the parade from prior years. You know, Maura, as I was getting ready for today, and I think you as well, we had a chance to go back and, mm -hmm. and look at prior years. And having that repository of content that Harbor Media provides us is just so essential, and we're so grateful to them for, for doing that. And also what's great is if you happen to miss the parade or you decided to stay home because it's raining, you can tune into harbormedia.org and watch it at your own, on your own time. And here are our elected officials. Yes. Chair Liz Klein. Yes, there's Joe Senator Ramsey, Patrick O'Connor. Joe Fisher from the Select Board. Representative Joan Moschino. And as you said. Uh, our town moderator, Mike Puzo. And he's wearing an <laughs> SSC tote bag. I love it. That makes me very happy. <laughs> that was not arranged. That? No, and there's I. Joan Moschino, <laughs> our state representative. Waving to everyone. She was a guest on our pre-parade show last yes, year. Yes, she was. And, you know, one of the things that makes Hingham such a great town to live in is there are so many engaged citizens, civically yes. engaged citizens. And as Bill Ramsey noted, Hingham runs by its volunteers, through mm. its volunteers, and because of its volunteers. And Absolutely. so that's really a, a wonderful thing to be part of as a town resident. I think the health of a, of a 
a democracy. You know, so much of that is by the engagement of its citizens Absolutely. and its volunteers. And I think we see so much of that today. And here is the Hingham Militia honoring town history since 1637. It's a nonprofit organization in town. Part, they are part of the Memorial Day, Veterans Day, St. Patrick's Day, and President's Day service. Oh. Woo! Okay. To Benjamin Lincoln, <laughs> yes. That'll wake <laughs> everybody up. <laughs> One of their celebrations, um, or they do reenactments, and they recognize the Battle of Grape Island. Yes. And, you know, I learned a lot about Hingham history. Some I knew, but not, not you know, I learned so much more. And the Battle of Grape Island took place in, on May 21st in 1775. And Grape Island actually sits right off the coast of Weymouth and is considered part of Hingham Bay and, and uh, Boston Harbor. And in the early 1700s, it was farmland, but it was a big, a big, you know, siege of Boston. The British were coming and the townspeople sent them away. And that was one of the first important battles toward our independence and here are our veterans our veterans such an essential part of the celebration absolutely so much gratitude for our <laughs> veterans all veterans and Hingham veterans they're always at the front of the parade yes they are our 2022 veteran of the year was Arthur Smith and he's retired from the US Coast Guard and the veteran of the year honor goes to a Hingham veteran that is very active in the community as well as with veteran services and the award is revealed during the Veterans Day ceremony so Arthur was honored in November of 2022 well, I there, think he, there is. he is congratulations and thank you with gratitude to Arthur he was honored in, in November of 2022 but he celebrated in the following year's 4th of July parade and there he marches by proudly in the golf cart you know it's great how the town of Hingham takes every opportunity to honor and, and thank our servicemen and women by organizing events on days like today as well as like you said more a Veterans Day mm -hmm. uh, Memorial Day President's Day and uh, also an opportunity to pay tribute to Benjamin Lincoln, a revolutionary war hero from Hingham who uh, accepted the British sword of surrender at Yorktown, yep, ending the War of Independence. And the Benjamin Lincoln House is now um, part of the Hingham Historical Society since 2020, so you can tour the, the, uh, the home along with Old Ordinary and downtown Hingham tours. And it really is a wonderful step back to colonial times. If you've never been to the Benjamin Lincoln House or Old Ordinary, it really is a phenomenal yes. you know, place to visit. Ties into our town's history. And now we're seeing the Standish Guards Drum and Bugle Corps. Crusaders, excuse me, cr Crusaders. And they come to us uh, from Boston. And as a senior corps, the minimum age to be eligible for membership is 21. Uh, membership in the Cr Crusader Senior Corps is not limited to alumni of the Boston Crusaders Drum and Bugle Corps. Current members come from various groups, drum corps, and high school bands of all sizes. And the mission of the Crusader Senior Corps is to celebrate the music, tradition, passion, and dedication established let's, in Greater Boston. And let's, let's listen. Take a listen. One of my favorite oh, patriotic tunes, <laughs> Battle Hymn of the Republic. This truth is marching on. Love it. <laughs> and making his way down Main Street now, the Grand Marshal of our parade, Warren Pellissier. And Warren has been a Hingham resident for 30 years. He has demonstrated enormous commitment to his community. He's been consistently a guiding force in addressing the needs of our town. His dedication to our community included his involvement with the Hingham Sports Partnership. He was a former board president shortly after that. He helped also with the completion of the Hingham Nursery School. And Warren became the HSP president at a time when the fields and track and tennis courts needed you know, improvements, and he got right on that. And he also founded the Special Needs Athletic Partnership, and that is our next We're list and group of performers. 
also known as SNAP. Uh, they provide recreation activities for South Shore residents with special needs by providing sports and recreational activities for children and young adults. It's a wonderful program, and actually Warren, I've known him for years because yeah. I've been in town for a long time. He actually coached my daughter in baseball back in the day, wow. and he ran the SNAP program, and my daughter was able to be um, a, a camp counselor for a week of that program, and it was, she was such a fulfilling experience and look at these Clydesdale yeah, horses oh. oh my gosh wow <laughs> to see them so up close it really is amazing quite Beautiful. something really a nod to historic times when horses were the primary mode of transportation Absolutely. in Hingham and see a lot of fourth of July spirit a lot of red white and blue uh, as we look at this float passing by here and another friend of mine <laughs> who is you know, a lot of people in town. Is awarded Hingamite of the Year for 2023, Tom Hoffman, affectionately known as Hoffy, and he's there with his wife, Deb. I have logged a lot of hours with Tom Hoffman on sidelines because our kids played sports together, lacrosse, etc. But Hoffy has volunteered for everything through the years. He's been involved with Hingham Youth Football since 2002. He's coached. He's been a pa past president and, and treasurer of also um, Hingham, uh, excuse me, um, HSP. He was a treasurer of Friends of South Shore Country Club. Oh, and here we have Hingham Football. Hingham Youth, Hingham football. Youth football. Congratulations. All right. These seventh graders were the Super Bowl champs for the 2022 season. The seventh grade Raiders had an undefeated season, enjoyed their 25th consecutive win since 2019. Truly an incredible accomplishment. You know, anytime you have an undefeated season, it's a big deal. So that's awesome. And Hingham Youth Football, grades 3, 5 through 6 and 7, they all are in Super Bowl bids, actually. So yes. it was a successful program and year overall. We just saw friends of the South Shore Country Club, I believe. Yes. They're, oh, they're upcoming. Here we go. Making their way down Main Street. The South Shore Country Club is a public golf course in Hingham, obviously. And last year, the town voted to renovate the pool, which was a very big, important um, Important initiative, yep. An another uh, group that Warren has been heavily involved in, uh, and this is a group that has um, things like golf clinics and really just does a lot uh, to provide recreational services to the Absolutely. town, the beautiful golf course. And the South Shore Country Club celebrated its 100th anniversary just last year in 2022. And here we have the this Hingham is the boys. Hingham High School girls golf team. And I, I'm going to guess that the golfers practice at the South Shore Country Club. <laughs> <laughs> Making their way down historic Main Street now is the Commission on Disabilities. This commission has been up and running for over two years and has been able to advocate for several really important improvements in the town, such as a fully accessible wheelchair parking spot downtown and a new wheelchair accessible bench near the waterfront. And you know, the commission is available to, uh, to anyone and they want to help anyone in Hingham that may have a need. So they would encourage you to reach out and consider being part of the solution. And you can find many of these groups that are marching in the parade, have websites. And so if there's something that you're interested in, please, please do sort of reach out, research, look up their website, because there are so many wonderful ways to volunteer and be engaged and involved in the town of Hingham. Yeah, and I think so many of the groups that are marching here today, you know, they're all committed to helping improve the life of our citizens here in Hingham. I think we Including see right the now. Human Rights yeah, Commission. The Human Rights Commission coming down and I think, again, it just speaks to that that sense of community and everyone coming together today. Absolutely. And now we have our parade button winner, William Donovan. We are, we are proudly we are wearing proudly these wearing. buttons. We everyone have supported the them. cause. And William Donovan from Plymouth River School is a fifth grader whose design was accepted and awarded as the parade of 2023 button award winner. Congratulations again, William. Yes. They received a hundred designs that were submitted, and look at look at those kids in oh, the fire truck. I love oh my being gosh! In the fire truck. Honestly, when the fire trucks go by, you can just see all of the faces of the little kids light up. It is a huge highlight <laughs> when the fire trucks yes. make their way down Main Street.
We've talked a lot about earlier the Hingham Fourth of July Parade Committee that, you know, plans this entire um, parade. And they just do an amazing job. And now we have the Women's Club and the School Committee. <laughs> Hello. The Women's Club every year puts on the Festival of Trees, yes. which is a fundraiser during Christmas in the Square. And another they do great an amazing job. It's, a, it's a, another great event. They, they decorate trees and then they sell them to raise funds. And the, I mean, the centerpieces and the trees are just beautiful, absolutely stunning. Hingham Women's Club has been helping the community since 1940, and each year they raise over $25,000 to support scholarships and assistance with food insecurities and homelessness. Today's float that we just saw honors current and past scholarship winners celebrating their accomplishments with the entire town. Oh. And here comes an all-time parade favorite, the Shriners Clowns. <laughs> Talk about lighting up kids' faces. The Shriners clowns just well, make the day. <laughs> what would a parade be without some clowns? Right, exactly. <laughs> I think he's a little big for that car. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the Shriners clowns uh, support Shriners Hospitals for Children through its fundraising efforts throughout greater Boston. The donations they receive go towards supporting the Shriners Hospital and the Sneaker Fund, which directly supports research being conducted at the Shriners Hospital for Children, specializing in providing in pediatric burn care. And there's oh, more. Yeah, there's more of them. <laughs> Even on this gray day, they managed to add a lot of color to our <laughs> they celebration. They certainly do. They certainly do. <laughs> hey! Hello. How are you? Oh my oh. goodness! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> testing, testing my catching skills. Guess I wouldn't have been my, a very good baseball player. My sporty play. kids. Oh, oh, of course I miss it. Oh, terrible Here we can hands. share this one. I can hear my husband, the hockey player, saying, "No hands." <laughs> oh well. It was a it's bad throw. Good. <laughs> I was a gymnast. I can do other things. <laughs> and the clowns are, the clowns are plenty. I love it. That's a great little train. Coming up next, making its way down Main Street, is the most unique float. <laughs> the, oh. With a straggler of a clown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there must be some joke in there, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that for next year. <laughs> oh, and here is most unique. Yes, this is the most unique float. Let's see, let's, let's see what they came look. up with. <laughs> it's nice the rain has sort of let yes. up so folks can enjoy the parade. And One of my kids' favorite things when we were watching the parade when they were younger was um, just oh. the, the clowns giving out candy. Oh, this is Wizard of Oz. Wizard this must of be Oz. Kids Cabaret. Kids Cabaret is an adolescent opportunity for kids to get involved in theater locally, and their production coming up is... The Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's a wonderful film. July 7, uh, 27, sorry, through July 29. And they've been around since 1989, providing adolescents with opportunities to immerse themselves in theater, music, and dance. Oh, my goodness. And here come the stilt walkers. This makes me a little nervous, <laughs> 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 to be completely honest. But wow, that's fantastic. Decked out in red, white, and blue. Yes. And keeping their balance way high up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd seems to really love them as well. And our oh, unicyclist. Here we go. Genoa Balin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm a little concerned about the slick conditions on the road. What do you think, Robert? He just keeps going, though. <laughs> Take a look. Oh. Oh. And he catch he's much better catching yeah. than we are, Mora. <laughs> yeah, clearly. 
I'm going to get a lot of grief for that at home, but that's okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Nice. Oh, my gosh. He kept them. Woohoo! <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Clearly, Genoa has a lot of experience riding in parades, and he's a real crowd pleaser. He Lower absolutely is. We'll give our cliche, don't try this at home. Yes, don't try. <laughs> exactly. Did you write that or did I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it, because I think I wrote it. <laughs> oh, and here's our not-so-spooky haunted <laughs> house. It says, all are welcome, October 13th, 14th, 14th 20th, 20th, and 21st. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little preview of Halloween 2023 yes, there. exactly. <laughs> Upcoming. It'll be fall this before we know it. This is Old Colony Montessori Nursery School, which is the oldest Montessori school on the South Shore. Yes. <laughs> Look at the kids on that float. So adorable. The temperature is really comfortable, I have to say. Yeah. It's it's really, you know, people are in short sleeves. It's quite comfortable. The rain seems to have subsided at this point, and a couple of many people are taking down their umbrellas, yep. which is nice a good sign. Nice breeze. <laughs> There's a very nice breeze. We have, you know, a front row seat, we plush are accommodations <laughs> with a tent. <laughs> we get reserved seating for this parade, probably one of the best gigs in town. Exactly. <laughs> And I think we hear another, another band coming our band. way. band, yes, indeed. And music and bands are such an important part of parades they and our celebration. Music is a huge part of the 4th of July. They really are. It's the soundtrack of our independence. And just passing us now is the Northeast Italian Band, which is based out of Lawrence. And they perform at parades such as this one. They also perform for parties and religious ceremonies. And let's see, they... Here they come. Here they come. Members young and old yes. making music on Independence Day. Oh, another mm -hmm. great one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grand old flag. Coming up next is Notre Dame Academy. And the 4th of July uh, commemorates what this country achieved when it banded together. And these NDA girls come together, be it athletic, arts, and they find strength, success, and joy in the collaborative <laughs> these, spirit These are my of friends community. from oh. Vaseline and <laughs> the Notre Dame <laughs> girls lacrosse team won the state championship this year. And so I'm seeing some of my, my daughters old friends and coaches who are on the 4th of July float for NDA. A wonderful school yes. in Hingham and a great community. And, yeah. and <laughs> congratulations to all the girls at Notre Dame. Congratulations, girls. <laughs> Rain or shine, they showed up. The float includes the Notre Dame Academy's lacrosse team, who are the 2023 MIAA Division II state champions, but also NDA's um, Covelly Middle School Theater Company earned a silver medal at the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild recently, an all-star acting company award. So Love congratulations that. to them as well, and I think they're giving us a little yeah. sampling. Getting a nice <laughs> sampling of, of the arts and sports all together on the same float. All right, and here we have Jack Conway, South Shore Company, President and CEO Carol Bullman. One of the this companies is a great, oh my, with more real friends that I'm seeing. This is fun. Together, I love how they say together, celebrating the theme of this year's parade again, together for the fourth. Yes. You have to love a small town parade. I mean, this really is just do. so exciting and fun. And I think that's what's so fun about you know, whether you're in the parade or whether you're watching and you get to see a friend who's in the parade, every single person is involved in some way. Absolutely. And they feel connected. They feel connected to this. And here comes the 7th Regiment Band. 
Founded in 2002 by the Surfers Alumni Association, the 7th Regiment is a registered nonprofit drum and bugle corps. Let's take a listen. All right, I got my toes tapping yeah. now. To the beat of the <laughs> drum. I like their band uniforms too. Yeah. Pretty snazzy. seat here. from that band uh, range in ages from 13 to 22 and they come from all over the country for the 7th Regiment. Through music and marching, arts education, competition and travel, they're dedicated to developing leadership, character and life skills all through music which makes me very happy. And here in front of us now is Hersey Buckets, the Hersey Bucket Vehicle. Members of the Hersey family were among the first craftsmen in Hingham. Hingham was the wooden ware capital of colonial America from 1636 amazing. to 1945 and it was known as Bucket Town after one of its most prolific exports and Hersey Buckets offers exact replicas of those same wooden buckets offered centuries ago and now the Hingham Historical Society. Yes. We are looking right at their building, their yes. offices. There's Deirdre Anderson who is the executive director of the Hingham Historical Society. Deirdre is a is a Hinghamite through and through. She went to Hingham High School. She does a phenomenal job. The society was founded in 1914. It's a member supported nonprofit organization. And they have done a phenomenal job in preserving history and just coming up with new programs that bring history to, to life in our town today, which yeah, is absolutely. amazing. Another marching band. And we should also note that Deirdre was last year's uh, Hingham Person of the Year. He, she was the Hingamite of the Year, yes. indeed, in 2022, a well-deserved honor. For those people interested in getting involved in the Hingham Historical Society, they are a member-supported organization, and they just encourage people to um, join as a member. And if you join as a member, you get a discount on their events. And they run a really terrific fundraiser at Old Ordinary in the yeah. fall. It's called Tavern Night, and it is so fun and really well attended. It sells out every year. So if you haven't been, try to, try to get there. And coming down now on Main Street is the New Hampshire Pipes and Drums. Yep. A lot of bagpipes with this parade. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like they are based in Manchester, New Hampshire. Yes. So just a reminder that, you know, these groups that are performing today, we not only bring a lot of local groups together, but really bringing folks together from, from near and far. And, that's just one of the very exciting things about this parade, I think, is just the, the way it brings people here to our community and, and just brings people together through From that. all over, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, the fundraising that the 4th of July Parade Committee does allows them to bring in bands from all over. And, and And really elevates the quality of the parade. Absolutely does. Here, let's take a listen. And now here comes Hingham Dare. You know, I remember Dare as a, as a kid in school. Dare stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It's a nationwide program. It's been taught in Hingham schools for almost three decades. And of course, our beloved Officer Ramsey, the brother of our first guest this morning, yes. Bill Ramsey, a select board member. He runs Dare in Hingham, and there he is. Oh, Officer Ramsey. He posters decorating the float were made by sixth graders from St. Paul's. Hello. Hello, Officer <laughs> Great Ramsey. Great to see Officer Ramsey. And don't, don't forget that he hosts our show on Harbor Media, Cops and Kids. And yes. he just devotes so much time and energy and his resources to our community and helping kids make good choices in Hingham. So important. <laughs> 
This looks like a soccer theme. Yes. Nice job. <laughs> Oh, Hingham Youth Soccer. Hingham Youth Soccer has been around for a very long time. My own two daughters, who are 25 and 22, um, participated in Hingham Youth Soccer, and they have so much success. The program overall, those kids that learn how to play in Hingham matriculate to Hingham High School, and the Hingham High School girls soccer team won the state championship this year. So, Congrats. and they've had kids, you know, uh, students matriculate to college programs. It's a very strong program. And it all starts with Hingham Youth Soccer. And this is the Situate Band out of Situate Mass. Yes. Based in Situate Mass, the Situate Band has been welcoming South Shore musicians since 1933. Wow. With all the music and marching bands in this parade, what do you think so far? It's, it's really <laughs> something. You know, again, having this front row seat, I, I just feel like I, yeah. I couldn't be luckier. That's my husband. He just oh. walked by. <laughs> Let's give him a shout out. He actually marched in the parade back in the day. We'll get to that a little later. Okay, we'll get to, to some of the Hingham more. Youth Hockey fl uh, floats. But lots of organizations, sports teams. We just saw Hingham Youth Soccer, which was great. And, you know, Hingham Youth Hockey will be coming down. We, we saw the swim programs and South Shore Country Club. And, and it's just, it's, it really is every single facet of the community, yep. you know, participating, which is just so fun. Yep. Hingham on full display. And remember, you're catching us live in HD on Harbor Media, which is your hyper-local media content provider. And you can catch us on Comcast 1072 or Verizon 2131. And even more importantly, if you miss the parade, if you miss any of the action, and you, or you want to go back and check something, you can go to harbormedia.org and watch all the action on demand. Very exciting that we have that opportunity. It seems as if the rain has stopped completely, yeah, which is kind of exciting. All the, look at, the, um, the umbrellas, umbrellas are all down. closed. Yep. They're all down. Okay. And another float making its way down historic Main Street. Driving across the red, white, and blue stripes yes. on the center of the parade route. This is Wilder <laughs> Nursery School. Now I, I can't. I keep I saying this, but my kids connection to Wilder. <laughs> well, my my children went to Wilder Nursery School. It's it's. I live in South Hingham. It's very close to South Hingham. It's a it's treasured treasured place. It's been around for families since 1924, mm. and is considered to be the oldest cooperative preschool in the United States. Wow, which is really amazing. You know, it's amazing. Hingham is home to so many firsts, Maura. And Absolutely. Just today has been such a reminder of that. So much history and tradition. And here are the Girl Scouts. This is a, a, a highlight to march in the parade. Girl Scouts and the Cub Scouts will be following. wonder if they have any Girl Scout cookies. I know. <laughs> we could, that sounds good right about now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you see lots of parents marching with their kids as well. And, and oh. you know, so much of, so many of these groups, whether it's a sports team or the Girl Scouts, the parents are so involved and so helpful and yes. so engaged. And it really does take that full effort to have the success that these organizations do have. And so we want to give a shout out to all the volunteers, all the volunteers in these organizations, yep. in our parade, in our town, in our government. It's, I mean, we're volunteering to give, pay it forward for the town of Hingham. And it's, it's you know, it feels good. Feels yeah, good. It really does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to see all the families together and, and like you said, all the youth uh, that are here today. And you know, at the conservatory, uh, whenever I, I come to talk to groups, I say, you know, we don't have to thank the students. We have to thank the families because yeah. we know without the family support, we wouldn't have the students. That's a and very good I point. I see that on display here today uh, as I see all these youth participating and, and joining this spirited Hingham tradition. I know. And one of the things that you uh, offer at the Sasha Conservatory is a preschool. We do. So t tell me a little bit about the preschool. Arts Integrated Preschool Pre-K Kindergarten, uh, one of the only programs of its kind in the region. So the children are getting music, they're getting oh, dance. Uh, they're not only getting the performing arts, but they're getting visual arts as well. And it, 
it's truly an immersive education and in a conservatory environment. And for so many children, it starts sort of a, a lifetime of, of learning through the arts. And, and, and a really love helps of music. Absolutely. Developing a love of music, which so is important. so important and yes. so helpful. And as we're watching all of these families walk by with their, their moms and kids and all of that, uh, another offering that you have coming up just this weekend, in fact, at the South Shore Conservatory is the wonderful, I've been many times, festival uh, evening under the stars. Yes, we do. You know, I, I like to say that Hingham loves its traditions, and I like to think that Evening's Under the Stars, which has been around for more than a quarter century, is one wow. of those traditions. And looking forward to kicking off this Saturday with an evening on the red carpet featuring oh. some movie music and, nice. and Broadway favorites. I, and, love, uh, I love a good Broadway tune. Don't we all? Ones. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I, I do a little singing. I do yes, sing at you Christmas were in the me. Square. So I've done that for about 15 years, you know, or 10 years actually, Qu choir, et cetera. But uh, maybe we'll do a little rendition uh, of something, a little duet, we'll Robert and I. All right. <laughs> but not before we say hello and welcome to the Hingham Cub Scouts Pac-27. <laughs> Look at them, how cute. Like the Girl Scouts, the Cub Scouts are a national organization whose mission is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and Scout Law. So they are doing their part to keep up that tradition. So fun, I have to say. So one of my, uh, when my daughter was on a, a sports team that won for Hingham Youth Hockey, she got to participate in the parade. And um, one of the parents had a flatbed truck, and so okay. the kids all got to make the float. And it was so nice. They donated their yard and the car and the truck and all of that. And that was just like a highlight for yeah. my for my kids. And my, even my older daughter, who wasn't in the parade, or got to decorate the float. And I have so many pictures of that day, and wow. it was really just a fun experience. And and they all got to be in the parade and great memories know, formed on yeah, the Fourth of July. Absolutely. And I here we have uh, another band, the I Old Colony Highlanders Pipe Band. And this is a multi-generational pipe band made up of experienced members organized for competitions, performances, parades like today. Mm -hmm. And they've been number one in Eastern United States competition for seven years, which is great. And one young member is ranked in the top three of amateur pipers in North America. So let's listen to these pipers do their thing. <laughs> And that was the Old Colony Highlanders Pipe Band. You know, one of the things I love about the parade is just the, the variety of cars. We're seeing so many different types of automobiles today, a lot of historic vehicles. I think we see a classic Mustang <laughs> passing by now. Right behind it, oh, a I love this very one. Uh, love. retro <laughs> VW van. Coming up next is the best of parade. So this is a, a huge honor and they're making their way down, marching. The Hingham Congregational Church also celebrating the theme of Together for the Fourth. And they are celebrating their 175th Jubilee. Amazing. Um. Oh, what a great float. <laughs> And HCC's historic <laughs> clock tower inside their 118-foot steeple is maintained by the Hingham Historic District Commission. And through a grant from the Hingham Historic District Commission, they also were able to build their newly uh, handicap-accessible ramp in 2017. And, and as you said, they're thrilled to be celebrating their 175th Jubilee with Hingham. Congratulations to them on that very special occasion. History happens here, for sure, in Hingham. Absolutely. So much history. 
and Speaking tradition. of history, oh, I think we've goodness. got the Bear Cove Fire <laughs> Museum, one of the other very important elements here in Hingham that helps to preserve our history. It and they house a collection dating back to the early years of firefighting in Hingham and surrounding towns using primarily Hingham artifacts. So in the collection are the remains of the first fire engine, but I believe we are, this is an antique fire engine, very cool. The precedent was built in Hingham Center in 1805, the Deluge engine was yeah. built in 1875, and the Maxim Ladder, I Which believe is, that's, that's what we're looking at. Which is passing us right now yes. from 1922, it looks like. We have the Maxim Ladder passing by, and then we have... This uh, is engine number two. It says it right on the side. See, engine company number two, Hingham Mass. This group was able to get this up and running. It's the 1935 Aaron's Fox Pumper. Wow. And here it is rolling on down Main Street. What an amazing sight to see. It's considered the Rolls Royce of fire engines. And uh, this fire truck saw duty in Hingham from June 17, 1935 until November 11, 1961. And they said at the Bear Cove Fire Museum that that engine could fight fires today if necessary. So wow. how about that for restoration? <laughs> really put together some wonderful floats, the Bear Cove Fire Museum. Volunteers at Bear Cove, at the Bear Cove Fire Museum had to learn many different skills to restore the fire engine to the original look, including how to gold leaf. That was one of the skills they learned. The hardest part of the job was finding original parts, of course. And here we have Daly and Wenzer, piano and furniture moving, passing by another historic float here. I feel like we're stepping right. back in I, time exactly. as we're we are. seeing these floats. You know, as we see some of these historical artifacts pass by, it's important to note that right across the street at the Hingham Historical Society, they have a wonderful heritage museum, which is chock full of their archives and other historical artifacts. If you yeah. have a moment, um, check that out. And here I think we have the Russell Weissman Dixieland Band working their way down Main Street. Tribute to Uncle Sam, of course. We already saw we already saw Uncle Sam march on by at the beginning of the parade. He starts the parade, George Ford, 16-year Hingham resident every year. And it's a great way to kick off the 4th of July. And you know, none of this would be possible without the many parade sponsors and I know we can't go through all of them right now, but just want to give a special shout out to the parade committee for all that they do to make this possible and the resources that they bring together through the many initiatives in Absolutely. town. Absolutely. And to now here, this is something I know a little bit about. Yes, the Hingham tell us Girls more. Youth Hockey Hockey Program. These are the U8 level champs. Congratulations, girls. The coaches, parents, all the U8 girls from Hingham Youth Hockey are here to represent. They were the first ever all-girls hockey team to win at the Lobster Pot Hockey Tournament, which has been around for 25 years. And what a great accomplishment. Hingham Girls Hockey has come so far. I had a daughter who was uh, part of the Hingham Youth Program. My husband, who just walked by, was, yes. a, was a coach for years. There are many dedicated volunteer dads with hockey backgrounds who have coached programs for years. And, and I, my daughter, Lily, was very fortunate to go very far in her hockey life. She was fortunate to represent Team USA wow. um, at the World what Championships an and win, win a gold medal, which was quite fun. And I, I have all kinds of American flags and paraphernalia from that celebration, which I actually brought a flag for us yes, today to celebrate. Um, but anyway, Hingham is, is really a hockey town. And yeah. for those people who aren't aware or don't spend a lot of time in rinks like I have, um, you know, many notable people who have played hockey in the NHL have come from Hingham. In fact, uh, one one of our residents, young 20-year-old Maddie Beneers, was just named Rookie of the Year in the NHL. That's and really something. And he lives in Hingham. He's 20 years old, LeClaire Drive, a great friend, a great person, and he had an incredible year. And it all started in the town of Hingham on the rinks at Pilgrim with the Hingham Youth Hockey Program. So kudos to all of the people involved in that program. A lot of hockey notables from Hingham, Maura. Absolutely. Uh, Tony Amonti, um, 
grew up in Hingham. He played 17 years in the NHL. Marty McGinnis, also from Hingham, played at BC in the 92 Olympics. We've got Maddie Beniers, who I mentioned, Brian Boyle. He played, I think, 15 seasons in the NHL. And these are all, you know, people that we're all so proud of them, obviously. We're proud of everyone in this parade, but they have gone on to have really substantial and consequential hockey careers, which is, which is wonderful. I don't think the rain, I think the rain is done, which is, which is great. <laughs> Coming up down the road is the most beautiful float, All awarded right. the most beautiful float. So we are anticipating this rolling on down. really does take a lot of effort from <laughs> many different people, right, to pull these things off. And yes. when you're honored with the most beautiful float, I think that probably feels pretty good. Some accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the winner is the uh, Hingham Maritime Center. Oh, congratulations. Oh, that really is fantastic. The Maritime Center for over 50 years has offered sailing, rowing, Maritime education and community access to Hingham's picturesque waterfront. They've taught sailing and rowing to over 10,000 participants, and they look forward to fostering self-reliance, teamwork, physical fitness, and a solutions-oriented approach to thousands more. You know, and one of the, the features that makes Hingham such a great place to live is all of the natural resources, and yes. our harbor is one of them. And Hingham Harbor has 21 miles of shoreline, and the Maritime Center is right along the harbor, and actually that leads us into the Hingham High crew, because they do a lot of practicing. Yes, they there, do. As, they as well as Bear Cove, but... Um, they really take pride in the waterways of the Hingham Harbor, which is where they row and train. Um, it is a 100% parent volunteer-run group. Uh, it's amazing, uh, offering rowing as a sport That's to over That's really amazing. Hey Hingham guys, hi Sam. Students. I know Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Ackerman, a member of the rowing team. 100% um, parent volunteer run. I mean, that is significant, and kudos to them, and thank you to them. Oh, this is a terrific float. Wow. Wow. They're showcasing their boats. Thanking their community partners who helped to pull it all together. Uh, they fundraised to run four fleets. 12 racing boats, 10 trailers, six safety motor coach boats, and 38 the Erg, Erg indoor, indoor rowing, rowing machines. machines. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And their sponsors, They're doing a little mass rowing movement, right now on the Brixman Yoga, and also Mass Movement and Cycle Town. Hingham oh. crew operates thanks to eight community agreements to access and train and tow on Hingham Harbor. And we're hearing a little God Bless America Which come down the parade mm -hmm. way. And this is the Roma Band, I believe. Roma Band oh. musicians continue a long-standing tradition to provide crowd-pleasing Italian and patriotic music. With a light from above. <laughs> They were founded in 1919 in the north end of Boston. And this is okay. Curtis Farm Tractor and Tree Service. Oh, and here we have the, the company, company theater. theater, and they are gearing up for a production of Joan of Arc Rock Opera. Company Theater entertains, enlightens, and energizes audiences with high quality productions. And through the Academy, inspires students of all ages through the power of the performing arts. There's Zoe Bradford, <laughs> their artistic director. Hello, Zoe. It. Happy fourth. Be sure to support them. Joan of Arc, the Brock musical, begins July 28th through August 20th. Here we have another team. This looks like uh, Hingham, Hingham Little League. <laughs> I love the unis <laughs> and the dads. You see, I'm yep. sure those are all the volunteer dads who are coaching, spend a lot of hours logged on the baseball pitching mound and in the field. And right behind them, we have Hingham Softball. Hingham Softball is a relatively new program in town. 
but has enjoyed a lot of success in its short lifespan. So we, we caught one of these. We haven't caught any candy yet, I'm noticing. <laughs> I hope they don't throw so softball, because if I don't catch that, it could get ugly. <laughs> I have my red nose here. Maybe if I wear the red nose, I'll catch some candy. <laughs> oh, this is great. Still part of Hingham Girls softball. Love these. And making their way down, the Colonial Pipers. And this is a youth bagpipe and drum band based out of Boston. Why don't we take a listen to them? This band was founded in 1972 by the late Father Francis Crowley. Father Crowley held to the unwavering belief that young people can do great things. And, and true, true to his, his vision, vision yeah. uh, of a band fueled by the energy of youth, the CPBB is based on principles of peer mentoring, student leadership, and a steady dose of fun and silliness. Got to have the I fun and silliness part. in there. <laughs> I love that. You know, we've been talking a lot about the Hingham uh, Fourth of July Parade Committee, and now would be a great time to, to recognize our sponsors who who have donated to the parade, and there are many. A.W. Perry, the longest and strongest sponsor to the Hingham Fourth July Parade Committee, Hingham Institution of Savings, Kate Johnson, McCusker Gill, Duncan at 315 Lincoln Street, the Fruit Center, South Shore Conservatory, and Richard Insurance. And we have Turner Custom Building, Tracy Environmental Consulting, the South Shore Country Club, Raphael's Greenside Grill, Hingham Jewelers, Talbot's, Color Max, Pfeiffer Pinkham LLC, Bolt Depot. Pine Cohane, Hingham Lumber Company, Notre Dame Academy, Hingham Rotary, Drowen Tatio and Morgan PC, Michael Handerhan Remodeling, Hingham Department of Public Works, Hingham Firefighters Association, Hingham Municipal Light Plant. The Hingham Police Department, and we see they're such a big part of today in keeping everyone safe mm -hmm. and keeping the parade on track. Weather Vane Companies, LaRusso Bristol Stone, Plymouth Quarries, The Range Bar and Grill, 17 Emerald Street B&B, &B, Justice Hardware, and George Washington Toma. And clearly so many dedicated and generous volunteers that make this all possible. Yes. and. Uh, Another special thanks to our sponsors who help us to put it all together. And now here we have the Hingham High School wrestling team. And the theme of their entry this year is Hingham Wrestling Makes History, 10 times Patriot League champions. That's amazing. The present day wrestlers and the alumni associated with the wrestling team from the past 10 years helped to put together this float. And they're all there, and they're sporting their <laughs> Hingham wrestling gear and marching in the parade. So past and present, everyone who was involved in the program. That's so nice. They are fired <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> they needed a little rain gear for the um, mannequin on the back of that float. <laughs> Seems the rain has started again, yeah. just a little bit, as we make our way towards the end of the parade. And Some here of we the have final performers. Yes, here we have My Gym Children's Fitness, and the My Gym Children's Fitness Centers are located in Norwell and Cohasset. They provide early learning, physical education classes, and birthday parties for children ranging from three months to seven years old. And they've been serving South Shore families for over 15 years, since March of 2008. Great job. And this is the Hingham Civic Theater, and you have a yes. little, a little um, connection to this. One of my <laughs> colleagues, uh, Julie Collins, she ran the race this morning, and, and there, there she is. is. She is soaked and walking at the end of the <laughs> Hi, parade. Julie. Hi, Julie. Good to see you. And they are celebrating, uh, I believe they're celebrating their 75th anniversary year. Uh, they've been performing since 1948, and their mission is to bring live musical theater to the South Shore, and they have a production of Grease coming up Greece. soon. Oh. One August. of my all-time faves. Go Grease Lightning. That's right. All right. I think we have here the Boston City Windjammers. Who have been marching since 
and here a little we mounted troop. Yes, some more beautiful horses. Another show of patriotism with the American flag. It's a reminder of our history. And the National Lancers have been around since 1836, and they are the official mounted cavalry squadron of Massachusetts. Make way for the horses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll have a mariachi band making their way down Main Street to delight the onlookers and the parade goers. <laughs> <laughs> After this giant vehicle. <laughs> Let's hope the horn doesn't <laughs> drown out the mariachi band. No fun. Oh, and here they are in traditional attire. Take a listen. I feel like we're being personally <laughs> serenaded here by <laughs> the mariachi <laughs> band. Great. Bravo to our mariachi <laughs> band. Yes, indeed. It's a reminder of just what a multicultural celebration July 4th is. <laughs> Waves of plenty. Love it. Okay. And here is another nod to our parade sponsors. Yes, this is the 4th of July parade committee. Again, we need to. We can't say enough about the work that they do and, and and who they rely on. And these are the sponsors right here. They're listed. We it's a beautiful listed banner. And, and that's the end of our parade. Yes. We, we finish with the 4th of July Parade Committee. A shout out to Jim Murphy, who is the committee chair. Yes. He has done a fantastic job. He's been with the organization forever. And that's a wrap for us here at Harbor Media. We thank you so much for joining us. And we are grateful to be here and bring this to, to our town. Harbor Media is live on HD, Comcast 1072, Verizon 2131. For all of us at, at Harbor Media, I'm Maura Farden. And I'm Robert Chinante. And happy 4th of July, everyone. Happy 4th. <laughs>